I first went to the sheriff's office. Did he leave? With no sign of the sheriff, I went to his home. No answer there. That's his car right there. Sheriff Graybill issuing this statement instead, his first comment since video of his son emerged last month. I tried asking questions of Randy Lafernia. as she walked out that door here at the Washington County Detention Center after posting a $10,000 bond. Her attorney says she's been vilified by the public and the media, and she's innocent. Randy, do you have a minute? Anything to say to the family? Anything to say to Andy? Lafernia's attorney, Rick Spivey, says she's not responsible for the death of Dallas because Andrew Hunnigan is an independent contractor. What was he like and what, what kind of a six-year-old boy was Weston? He wouldn't ask for permission. He'd sort of give a glance to, to make sure that you got the head nod. As soon as he got the nod, he was off like a rocket. So. Where does he get that from? Yeah. Him. <laughs> Thomas had planned the maze when he was about 15, so I was fulfilling his wish. This was his dream. This was his dream, yes. New Year's Day 2017, a day Greg Eastep will never forget. I asked him if he's going to just stay in Abingdon or Bristol with his friends. They'd gotten together for several years. He said, no, he wanted to sleep in his own bed. And I said, okay, well, you be careful. And he said, yes, there's nuts on the road. And that was the last thing my son said to him. 700 kids got the chance to be an Olympian today, along with one reporter. All right, looks like we got some pretty stiff competition out here on the field. Tell me what you're thinking going into this. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm 26 years old. These kids look no older than six, so I don't see much competition out here. Maturity will be my biggest advantage. To be the best, you have to beat the best. 11-year-old Landon White. Joey, PJ, we are getting loaded up right now on a ride that we took 365 days ago to the day. And believe it or not, the star of this entire deal last time around was the screaming teen in the purple shirt. She's right behind me. She's decided to try to do this once again. And we are bringing Carly Hendricks along for the ride here at the Appalachian Fair. Her family and friends are here for, for support. Okay, are we locked in? Carly, you've spent a year reflecting. I have. What has the last year been like for you as you went through this process of this video going viral and seeing 500,000 people? I've learned to laugh at myself and be ready for the unexpected. As soon as you said I was going to be on the news, I knew today was my day to shine. <laughs> so you're welcome for that empowerment. Yes, yes, yes that was an accident. You were actually five seats down from me last time. We're ready whenever you guys are, by the way. I guess we need to be strapped in. You were five seats down from me last time, and this microphone still picked you up very well, screaming incredibly loud. We have some of that video right now. Can we roll that, Joey, back in the studio? Okay, so that's the video of Carly and I going around in circles. Little did we know we'd be here a year later experiencing this. What are you looking forward to most, and what anxieties are going through your body right now? Well, uh, I'm kind of scared about the startup. But I, I can say that the view is beautiful right now. The view is beautiful, and I think you're covering up for a lot of things you're going through internally right now. I am. And wait, wait. <laughs> and, and it begins. Okay, Carly, here we go. Hallelujah. It's been fun. It's. Woo! Lord! <laughs> okay, and for the record, not a fan of heights myself, but you stole the shit. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Okay, Carly, that's the first one. That's the first one. Here we go. I promise you no one was more upset than me. A monument honoring the first five students to integrate ETSU, covered up by what University President Brian Nolan calls a message of hate. If that person was sitting across from me right now, what would you say to him? You don't want to know what I'd say to him. Why? Because I try to be mindful, I try to be appropriate, and I would probably chew a hole in the side of my mouth. As the investigation began, oh, one of man. Nolan's first calls was to Keith Johnson, the university's first ever vice president of equity and inclusion. What was your reaction when you saw that? Uh, I think I experienced a lot of frustration. Um, I was angry. It's the same plaza where a former ETSU student wore a gorilla mask and dangled a banana from a rope at a Black Lives Matter rally in 2016. Go back and look at who was front and center that day in front of Borchuk Plaza, who kept peace, who smiled, 
who was captain of the rugby team as a freshman, who was named homecoming king on Sunday, Saturday. History sometimes comes full circle. A day after the signs were found, Jalen Grimes was crowned homecoming king. The things that are making the headlines are the things that, you know, they get on social media and they circulate. If we do the same things with the things that we do have and then we continue growing on those programs and continue growing on those uh, resources, then we can make that circulate just as much as something like this is on the news. Supporters of inclusion aren't backing down and have a message for students. Do not let one person and one person's hatred allow you to lose faith in why you're here. John Engel, News 5, WCYB. While the practice isn't uncommon in the Tennessee legislature, voters may be surprised to hear that it's legal. Since 2010, State Rep Matthew Hill of Jonesboro has sent more than $30,000 in donations to the political consulting firm that he owns. From 2010 to 2018, Hill spent a total of $36,556 for campaign marketing with Rightway Marketing, a business he owns with his brother, fellow state representative Timothy Hill of Blumville. That's just a fraction of what we spend in a political campaign, and, you, and everybody knows that. So, no, I don't, I don't think that it's inappropriate to use campaign money for campaign uh, services. Tennessee law allows lawmakers to use their own businesses for campaign activities at market value. I mean, it might be legal for you to pay for um, these services, but you know, are you actually getting services that are, are true services that you're not just funneling through a company and saying, oh, I, I received these services. Matthew Hill is under heightened scrutiny as he vies to replace Glenn Cassida as House Speaker. Cassida was forced out amid a scandal largely involving sexually explicit text messages he sent about women. A Nashville newspaper revealed Hill's Christian Magic Supply Company doesn't have a state business license. Hill says he was advised he didn't need one and feels that he's being targeted. The Nashville media does not get to pick who the next Speaker of the House is. The House of Representatives gets to choose that. Governor Bill Lee presented Isaiah 117 House with a $100,000 grant in July as part of his state budget. But Representative Matthew Hill's surprise announcement of an additional $75,000 grant coming to the organization raised questions. Part of my job as state representative is uh, to advocate for, for things and for worthy causes in my district. And Isaiah 117 House is definitely a worthy cause. I think it's really reckless to announce a grant that has been funded when it hasn't been funded. It hasn't even been applied for. State Senator John Lumberg says he and his family support Isaiah 117 House, a program for transitioning children into foster care. But what's at issue is following grant and budget guidelines, being responsible with taxpayer money. They want to see a budget that they can look at and know what's being spent and know that there aren't hidden little dark areas of secret funds. That's not how we operate as a state. Lawmakers questioned where Hill was getting the money in the first place. Did you know that that was in the budget? I did not. I serve on the finance committee and we go through that thing with a fine tooth comb. No grants have been um, no, sir. Approved, though. No, sir. On no grants have been uh, approved. No, sir. And Governor Bill Lee says none of that money is even up for grabs yet. This is a part of the budget process. We appropriate funds. We make determinations about when to spend them. We're now making the decision that with these funds, we're going to spend them next year. Right, guys. John Engel, News 5, WCYB.